Welcome back, Heather again. And hello from me, Evan. I'm a technical curriculum developer for Google Cloud. If you're a data-driven enterprise, you've likely been met with an explosion of data growth in recent years. You need to find the best way to store all those terabytes and petabytes at scale. So welcome to episode three. And here's where we're going to introduce you to Google Cloud Storage. It's a storage solution specifically suited for your volumes of both structured and unstructured data. Data doesn't just mean rows and columns of numbers anymore. You may want to store unstructured data like messages, documents, multimedia files, web pages, and so on. Whatever your storage requirements are, security, availability, and cost will be your three key considerations. Cloud Storage aims to meet all of these requirements. At its core, Google Cloud Storage is a massively scalable storage solution, and it runs in the exact same backend that powers Google's own applications, like storing Gmail's email messages, the billions of high-res Google Photos, and all the data that's associated with searching and indexing the internet. So how do you know which type of storage option for you to choose from? Cloud Storage offers four different kinds of storage, multi-regional, regional, nearline, and coldline. You can check them out in more detail here. So let's take a few examples. Say you wanted to store disaster recovery backups that you'd rarely need, say once a year. Then you would consider cold line storage. You'll get a lower cost per gigabyte stored since you won't be accessing your data as frequently. Way on the other side of the spectrum, say you wanted to support streaming data like videos, games, or your applications. Here you want to optimize for high global uptime, so you want to consider something like multi-regional or regional storage instead. The three key factors you want to keep in mind when choosing a storage option is availability, or how frequently you need to access the data, minimum storage duration, so asking yourself, are you archiving monthly backups or storing short-lived data, and finally, pay-per-use pricing for storage and access. Whichever option you choose, they all offer the same throughput, low latency, high durability, and security. Securing your data is always top of mind. All applications and data in Google Cloud Storage benefit from the same security model that Google itself uses to keep its own customers safe when they use Gmail, Search, or other Google apps. Data encryption takes place on the server side as soon as the data is received, before it's even written to a disk and stored. You can also provide your own encryption keys for server side encryption. Google Cloud Platform and Google's own infrastructure is certified for a growing number of compliance standards and controls and it undergoes several independent third-party security audits. You can refer to our first episode for more information on the management of access control using Cloud IAM. Everything that you store in cloud storage is contained inside of a bucket. Buckets are these elastic containers that hold your data and the metadata that's associated with it, and they help you organize and control access to your data. The Google Cloud Platform Console UI can be used to perform simple storage management tasks for cloud storage, including the creation and management of buckets. This and more advanced tasks can be performed using the GSU TIL command line tool. And now for the fun part, hands-on Quick Labs. You can check out the link to start the Quick Lab here. In this lab, you will use the Google Cloud Platform Console UI tool to create, use, and manage a storage bucket. So we'll be using the console version in this lab, but you'll be able to do all these operations using the command line as well if you wanted. And you can check out the Cloud Storage Quick Start CLI to learn more. And keep in mind, this lab will take you about 30 minutes to complete. OK, so here we are inside the Quick Lab. The first step that you're going to be doing is creating that storage bucket. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now for step two, we're going to upload some objects to it. Follow along. OK, so step three, we're going to make these objects publicly accessible using the Google Cloud Platform command line. Here we go. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this episode and would love to hear more about how you use or would use Google Cloud Storage. Don't forget to keep visiting our on-air webinar series, practicing inside of those quick labs, and taking a look at our blogs. All the links are found down below. You can also learn more about Google Cloud Storage through our on-demand courses on Coursera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Check out last week's episode where we take a look at machine learning. We'll discuss a use case from Google and run through a section of our ML Engine Quick Lab.